Hello, Damir back again with another custom ROM review. This time I will be taking a closer look at the Android 4.3 version of Revolt ROM that was finally released about two weeks ago. Revolt is an all-in-one ROM similar to ROMs like Pac-Man and has even more similarities to my most favorite 4.2.2 all-in-one ROM called Rootbox that sadly still hasn't gotten a 4.3 version and most likely won't even get one anymore. Personally I think it will skip directly to 4.4 once that will be released. Maybe the best way to describe Revolt would be calling it Carbon ROM with the hybrid engine on top. If you saw my Carbon ROM review, you already know it is or was my most favorite 4.3 ROM back then. If you wanna know if Revolt is able to take that crown, be sure to watch the rest of my review. As always, be sure to check my database for a detailed list of all the features. Okay, so let's start with the good stuff. Feature and option wise, you get all the usual suspects like Halo, Pi, the AOKP navigation bar and the hybrid engine you would expect to see on an all-in-one ROM. And on top of that, you also get all the other great AOKP stuff like the traditional quick toggles, the ribbons and more. But also newer features like the not that long ago introduced things like list view animations and the AOKP animation controls that, that gives you full control over all the system transition animations. You get a whole variety of different transitions to choose between as you can see here in the list. Let me quickly show you some of those so we can better see what I mean. Besides that, it's also worth mentioning all settings are nicely and logically arranged within the Revolt control app that can be found in the settings. The next important pro is the great overall stability and all those ton of features actually working stable and bug free. So you don't have to live with the compromise of having tons of features but only a fraction of them working reliably like you have to on some more sloppy coded ROMs. But where there's sun there's also rain, so let's take a look at the less good parts of this ROM. First thing to tell is there is not really much bad to tell about this ROM in general, but if you want to pick on some things you could mention the way of presenting the ROM's features with revolt control not being as cool and stylish as ROMs like Pac-Man and Carbon, but that's not a real hurdle either. Revolt control is a very clean and reliable method to contain options, almost everything is where you would expect it and in most cases you will quickly find the option or feature you are looking for. Two other less good things would be the rather limited official device support for only the more popular devices like the first gen Nexus 7, a whole bunch of recent Samsung Galaxy devices and the HTC One. There's a folder for the Nexus 7 2013, but it's still empty though, so at least there's a good chance to get it for that one as well soon. The second thing are the less frequent updates. The latest build I have is from September 28th. This means almost two weeks have passed since the last update. Good thing though, not much since there has happened, so you're not missing out on anything and it doesn't really have any major bugs to fix anyways. We covered the good and the bad, now let's check how well the performance is on this one. Actually, to be honest, it's quite impressive out of the box. At first, I really didn't even bother trying out custom runs since the performance was very satisfying on the Nexus 7 2012 in the first place. No major hiccups, gladly no hard lags and overall a pretty snappy and smooth performance in general, considering the quiet data Tegra 3. On more recent devices the performance should be even more impressive I'd guess. But out of curiosity I still decided to give my favorite custom ROM kernel called Experience a run for its money and not to my surprise the experience has gotten even better. Faster and smoother overall but you also have to keep in mind the latest kernel version does quite some overclocking by default. Nothing risky but still. So the better performance comes with the compromise of lesser battery life. I am sure if you do some battery tests you will notice the decreased battery life. But honestly in common daily use within a course of few days you won't even notice a real difference as long as you don't check the stats all the time. For me the general boosted experience makes easily up for the maybe half hour less of screen on time. A direct comparison is harder for me now since I'm using three devices constantly now instead of just two as during my reviews before so please keep that in mind. We know most about the ROM itself now but how well does it compete with other ROMs out there? I think its biggest 4.3 competitor right now would be Pac-Man. Since there aren't really any other 4.3 all-in-one ROMs out there, at least none of them having the hybrid engine and I don't even want to mention the blatant Pac-Man clones out there that are trying to fool users making them believe it's their own work. Pac-Man still has a slightly broader variety of options and is also getting more frequent updates so it's always having the latest and greatest features. But this also comes with the price of lower stability and more bugs that can be quite annoying. Revolt therefore has a bit more AOKP stuff like the traditional quick settings toggles and some other minor stuff. All integrate very well, mostly bug free and very stable. Pac-Man is a great ROM, don't get me wrong, but Revolt just seems a bit more polished, focusing less on the most and latest features but more on merging them well and reliable. It seems to me like it's taken itself more time for the important stuff to actually get it right. 
That's also an explanation for less frequent updates and the more limited device support. But considering it's an alpha build, the current status is more than just impressive. If you don't care about the hybrid engine at all, I might even give Carbon a slight advantage here for a broader device support and more frequent updates. But either way, both are amongst the very best out there in my opinion. As always, I will try to tell you now who I think this ROM is best suited for and for who not. It's pretty easy for me this time. If you love AOKP and Paranoid Android, especially the hybrid engine, it's a no-brainer. If there's a build for your device, you should definitely try it. If you want to stay minimal and don't need that much features, you could maybe even still try it just because of the great stability and more than satisfying performance. But some people just don't like all-in-one ROMs in general, so this is maybe not their first choice ROM. I get that. After all, it's their loss. But that's just my personal opinion as a huge all-in-one ROM fan myself. After all talking, I think it's time to draw a conclusion and see what we've got. Personally, I'd say this is the best 4.3 all-in-one ROM at the moment. You get all the great stuff from all major branches, so there's almost everything you could possibly wish for. It's fast, stable, feature-proof, and the only thing holding it back, I'd say, is the rather limited device support. Personally, I'd be really happy having the chance to get it for all my current devices. I'm okay with the less frequent updates if all of them turn out to be as great as this first alpha I'm using on my Nexus 7 2012 right now. So that's it for my revolt review. I hope you liked it, and as always, please give me a thumbs up. It doesn't cost you anything but I really appreciate it. Also please reshare this video with your friends and subscribe my channel. Until next time, bye.